Thank you. All right. Um, let's see. Clicker. Yep. So I'm uh, Rick Ernst, CTO of uh, Cloud9 IDE, and um, we just launched our Bitbucket integration yesterday. Um, and uh, we're very happy to be here at the Atlassian Summit and see so many cool um, developer productivity tools and everybody working to make happy nerds because we're definitely one of those companies that is uh, trying to make the whole experience better for developers. Um, so, let's see, there we go. So what is Cloud9 IDE? Um, I think uh, that uh, needs a little bit of explanation. Um, Cloud9 IDE is a developer environment entirely in the browser. So what Google Docs is doing for Office, um, we are uh, doing for uh, Eclipse and IntelliJ, putting your entire developer environment online. Um, because if it's online, you can do a lot of things more easily. It's always available. Um, you don't have to you know, copy it around between devices. Um, you can do collaboration much easier. Uh, you can do real-time collaboration with multiple people in, in, in different areas. And um, the environment is always the same. So, um, you know, imagine you're at home, um, sitting on a couch with your iPad, and somebody calls, hey, there's, you know, there's a bug. Could you look at this bit of code? Um, with Cloud9, you can open it on that device, you can look at a bit of code, maybe change two characters or let the other guy know what to, what to do, and immediately um, deploy to your environment that you're using. So you can make it a lot easier to work with your code and much more accessible. Um, like Mike mentioned yesterday, uh, software development and communication around software development is a very, very difficult thing. So. Um, the communication around planning and structuring is now all, you know, Jira does that pretty nicely, but the communication inside the code environment is still something of an unexplored area. How are you gonna do pair programming inside your IDE with a distributed team? How are you gonna do, um, you know, annotating your code or, or discussing uh, code architecture with a very much code-centric point of view um, if you cannot do that from your IDE? So that is, those are the things that we're working on. Um, We've launched Cloud9 ID only a few months ago, and uh, we realized what the massive task is that we've taken on. Um, but one of the th first things that we're starting with, with is making it easy to work with your code repository. Um, we launched with GitHub support, so you could easily use your uh, GitHub login and uh, just edit your repositories. And now we added uh, Bitbucket, which is a great user community that is also, um, that can now access their code and edit them edit entirely online. Um, I want to give you a video walkthrough of um, our Bitbucket integration and uh, I think it should start. Yeah, here we go. So um, you can log in with your Bitbucket account. You click the Bitbucket uh, button here on the screen. Oh, I can't actually see the video here. All right, so you can, um, you can log in with your, uh, your existing account. You don't have to create a Cloud9 uh, user account for this. It uses OAuth integration with, uh, with Bitbucket. So um, you log in, you get into the Cloud9 dashboard. And in the dashboard, you can see your Bitbucket project. Um, and this one, uh, we're just gonna clone to the Cloud9 environment so you can edit it. Uh, we're choosing the shared development server right now to uh, open this project. Um, click checkout and um, as soon as it has cloned your project, this is actually just the, the actual clone pro process uh, for Mercurial. Um, this project is now available for editing in Cloud9. As you can see, it's uh, got the Mercurial URL to your project here, and now we can click the button to um, open it in the online IDE. So this is the IDE loading. It's, uh, it's what you recognize as an IDE. It's got a file tree on the left, it's got a code editor, uh, it's got a console, and all the tools around it. One of the very nice things about the editor is that it's actually, uh, this is JavaScript by the way, this is, uh, it's helping you write your code. So here you can see uh, the difference between a typo and an error. It's showing up in your editor as you type, making it much easier to work with dynamic languages. Um, developers have to feel at home as well. So we have full theming support for the editor. Uh, we support TextMate themes right now to, to have your uh, look and feel be correct. Um, Vim support is coming up so that you have the key bindings that you expect uh, many of these other 
small but important things to have a effective work experience as a developer. The editor also has to be fast, at least as fast or faster than what you're used to in Eclipse or other IDEs. Um, here I show a little bit of the scaling dynamic of the editor. I'm just pasting until I have about 40,000 lines. You can see that it just runs fine in the browser. There's no problem there. Um, so um, I think the editor is actually faster than the one you'll find in Eclipse. So that's, that's pretty good progress on both the code for the editor and the browser. Um, this is a little Node.js uh, web server, and I'm now going to run it on the server. This is actually a, a Node.js server that can run your code. Here it opens up. I, I, it's a little web server that shows you how many times you hit the URL. Um, and running is interesting, but what is much more interesting is debugging. Um, I'm going to put a breakpoint on a line and uh, start it in debug mode. As you can see, um, now, if I hit the URL, it'll just keep loading because the server is now on an actual breakpoint. This is a debug experience that is very similar to what you're used to with .NET or uh, some Java environments. You can expect a call stack. You can step through the entire um, uh, code space and inspect variables to do your uh, object inspection right there. So um, just going to step through uh, through the code. This is Node.js, so this is a server-side JavaScript engine that you're now debugging. Uh, we're working on debugging integration with many other um, engines as well, so you can do Ruby, Python, and PHP um, in the near future with Cloud9 as well. So just to show you a little bit that you can also modify in-scope variables, here's a counter variable um, that you're exploring, and now I'm going to modify it to uh, show a different value. And... Uh, as you can see, this is a server process that's just running. It's not a PHP-style page refresh thing that just needs a source file change because it parses it every time. This is a stateful server that has the code replaced in, uh, in place. So this could be a very complex server that is doing multi-user stuff that I can put a breakpoint in and inspect the whole state and, and debug that. So uh, video goes fast. There's a Unix console at the bottom uh, that we're using for you know, normal shell access uh, listing, the un normal Unix stuff. Um, and you can also use it for uh, mercurial commands like status, commit, and that's what we're doing here right now. Uh, we just committed the code change that we did back to mercurial. Um, and as you can see in the second tab, the change that we just made live in the browser has been committed back to Bitbucket. So here's the whole flow of joining or uh, logging in with your, your Bitbucket account. <laughs> Uh, modifying, running debugging code, and pushing it back to Bitbucket. So there's no uh, client install anywhere. You can do this on any machine uh, with a modern enough web browser. So this is just a very, very small part of um, what Cloud9 is, and we're adding a lots of features here. Um, one of the next things that we'll release is the full collaboration part, where you can share uh, your environment URL with your colleagues. They can join in and you could do pair programming just like you can do with Google Docs. You can edit a document with multiple cursors and you can do that then for code as well, which is really, really nice um, because I think many of you have experienced how it goes with pair programming and trying to direct the other person to change exactly that. Well, this is going to be a lot easier. Um, another thing that we're going to release is the your own run VM so that... Um, this is a shared environment right now where there's limitations. With your own run VM, you can run any type of code. You can modify it to whatever you want to do. So that means that you have much more freedom in what you can uh, develop. Um, adding um, many more languages, uh, deployment options to different cloud providers. And if you want to use your own uh, box or VM, you can also uh, use SSH or SFTP support. Uh, Cloud9 is an open source project. Um, you can download Cloud9 from GitHub and run it on your own server as well. Uh, so if you're interested in playing around with building extensions or just modifying the code, go look at the open source part. Um, I think this about leaves a few minutes for questions. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, let me know. <laughs>